Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Jesper Offersen and on this channel here we are talking about skincare, hair care and uh, all those sort of things that are supposed to help you look younger for longer or kind of like stay as close to the year 30 or something like that for as long as possible because uh, when you are about 30 years of age then uh, your body is not that good at starting to uh, upkeep the body as it should be so it kind of like gradually goes worse and worse and worse as you get older from uh, the year 30. so uh, what i'm trying to do is uh, i'm trying to be as close to the year 30 or when i turned 30 as possible and uh, at the moment i am 47 so I i'm doing a lot of stuff in order to kind of like try and be as close to 30 as possible or kind of like not age that much because uh, what is anti-aging actually can you actually reverse aging or is it more kind of like a question about staying at the sort of level at 30 years of age kind of like for as long as you can so basically sometimes people will say that uh, oh they have really they have done something and now they look like 10 years younger well maybe they more kind of like look as they should for their age and uh, that might apparently for some be 10 years better when they're doing various stuff then they, they are actually looking if they didn't do that sort of stuff so i don't really believe that you can anti-age i just think that you can uh, kind of like um, go back to where you used to be uh, or kind of like where you should be compared to if you are not really caring that much for yourself so uh, yes it is a, a lot of stuff that you need to do and i do a lot of stuff and yes uh, it is uh, problematic because you can like uh, you can't really just have a long period where you're not doing anything because uh, then, then it will come back and haunt you so that is it is something that you need to be on every day so uh, a lot of the things that i'm taking is a uh, supplements obviously i don't do any sort of like a uh, medication or stuff like that it's just like supplements and uh, today we are going to talk about something called the nmn so that is something called a uh, uh, nicotine mononucleotide and uh, that is uh, what we have here and it is a, a sort of a, a whitish uh, powder and uh, I mean there's nothing special about it when you look at it, it kind of like looks like that and it is a bit dusty and uh, it actually is a relatively expensive because uh, in this big one here there is only 30 grams so uh, that is uh, not a lot and I think it's around the mark of uh, 30 pounds or something uh, like that and I will say uh, later I will say uh, how much uh, I take of the various uh, products that we are talking about uh, today because we are going to talk about uh, some other products as well and that is uh, something called uh, like a uh, epigenin and uh, then we have uh, something like a uh, niacinamide and you might know that from uh, various uh, serums and skincare sort of a uh, thing so when you are applying it onto your skin but here we are actually talking about it uh, to uh, take it as a sample and, and I will explain uh, why I'm doing that and then uh, we are also taking something else and that is something called luteolin so uh, that uh, kind of like looks like that and doesn't really say on the, on the front here but uh, it says uh, at the back that it is a uh, luteolin so uh, why am I taking all these sort of things? Well, uh, there is a, a lot of uh, talk about uh, NMN and uh, that is uh, something that is supposed to help you uh, make NAD plus in your uh, body. And that is something that is really, really uh, important. And that is uh, actually rather important for a lot of um, things that are going on in your body in order to make sure that your body is uh, working uh, correctly, particularly uh, with the uh, mitochondria. And that, that is something that is that is basically uh, the powerhouse of your cells. So that is uh, really important that that is uh, working well. But unfortunately, as we get older, then we are producing less and less NAD+, and that is uh, not great. So uh, there are uh, something uh, you can do in order to boost the production of NAD+, because NAD+, that is basically um, a molecule that is uh, so large that it cannot go into the cell. And uh, therefore it needs to be uh, broken down or it needs to be uh, in something that is um, possible to make into NAD+, on the other side of uh, the cell membrane. And there we have something like a NMN we have here. And you might have heard about something else. And that is called uh, NR. And that is a uh, nicotine and ribose. And that is uh, basically something that is um, supposed to be able to uh, go through the um, cell barrier and uh, into the cell. And there it will become uh, NMN. But uh, actually... Um, it is so that if you have uh, NR, then uh, it is a, a little bit of a longer process in order to make NMN. And from NMN, you are making NAD+. So kind of like you are a bit further away from getting what you want. And that is uh, NAD+. 
plus. So uh, the thing is that uh, some people they will say that uh, there is uh, no way that uh, inner men can actually enter the cell because there is no transporter for it. Or at least people will say that uh, there needs to be a transporter because uh, the molecule is uh, basically so large that it cannot just like uh, enter it uh, like uh, like a through a channel or something like that. It has to be uh, with a, a transporter. So that there needs to be something that is actually actively taking it and bringing it in uh, to uh, this cell and uh, it has been so that um, we did not really know if there was uh, such a, a transporter but uh, now uh, we know there is actually such a, a transporter and that is uh, really great because uh, then you don't need to take NR so uh, NR that is uh, usually uh, you can buy the um, there is a company and they uh, make something called a Niagen and uh, it is not exactly uh, cheap so uh, I would say that if you are getting hold of an NMN instead then uh, definitely uh, I would uh, take that because now that we know we have this uh, transporter then definitely we know that the uh, NMN will be taken up by, by uh, the cells so uh, it basically so that uh, in the intestines there is uh, this uh, transporter and actually it's so that at least uh, in mice that uh, when they get older then uh, in order for the body to sort of like um, compensate for not having that much uh, NAD plus then uh, it uh, actually is um, stimulating the body to uh, over express or express it a bit more this uh, transporter and that means that it's kind of like trying to compensate for not uh, having that much NAD plus so that it actually is taken up more in MN uh, in order to make uh, NAD plus and that would not really make sense if uh, NMN could not really be taken up uh, into uh, the cells and it can actually be, uh, be done by this uh, transporter so that's a uh, really great I will say that uh, I have tried a uh, Nigen before and uh, I stopped taking it not because there was any adverse effect or anything like that it was more like I was taking it and I just thinking I, I really didn't notice any sort of a, a difference. So uh, when I have taken a NMN, which I have done lately for kind of like maybe a month or maybe two months or kind of like, uh, like that, and it was definitely, uh, I saw a difference so much that I thought, okay, I'm going to have more of this and I'm going to look uh, a bit more into what is actually going on and if I can prolong the effect of it or how can I maybe help the body stabilize it or something like that so to get a little bit more uh, for my money, basically. And uh, I would say that uh, over that time I have noticed my skin has become better I mean it's not like my skin was like oh it was really bad and now I took this and it was just like absolutely now fabulous it was more like you notice these small uh, changes all the time and when you're taking something I'm saying okay that definitely something is, is, is going on and my skin has become a bit more um, like a plump and a bit more sort of like um, bouncy and uh, solid or something like that like a um, dense chewing gum or something like that so it's not like um it's not uh, like it's sloppy and stuff like that and that is definitely something i have noticed but i've explained before that i'm also taking uh, the amino acid uh, uh, leucine and i am taking uh, the uh, amino acid um, it's called a glycine. I've spoken about that before and that really is also something that is stimulating your body to produce more uh, muscle mass and stuff like that so all that is something i have been doing lately over the last uh, couple of months but definitely um definitely that has has made a, an absolute positive uh, effect uh, on my body and particularly also at uh, my husband's uh, body because he has a uh, and i've said that before he has uh, this um, condition that's called a uh, mutonic dystrophy so uh, dm1 and that is basically something that is uh, breaking down uh, muscle mass as you get older and kind of like starts to have an effect uh, if it is the, the adult onset version. Uh, it has an effect when you are about 30 years of age and that is why your body is starting to kind of like break down anyway. So it just basically means that his body is kind of like uh, showing the signs of aging a lot uh, quicker than it normally would. So the whole idea with all these supplements uh, both for me and for my husband is that uh, we would like to stay as close to as I said before the year when we were about uh, 30 years of age because uh, there our body would be uh, at its uh, peak basically and at that time he did not really have any sort of uh, issue with walking and, and his muscle and mass and that sort of thing so after having taken this um in a man for a couple of uh, months then i would say that definitely uh the training has become a lot better it kind of like one can now see that actually it matters to to make this sort of uh, exercises where i would say before some years ago where i did not take this or he did not take that either uh, we were in a training center and we kind of like yes you are moving your muscles and that sort of thing and uh, 
maybe you you kind of like want to feel that it's progressing but but really it it, it isn't and i would say that uh, now that we are starting to uh, exercise again with the uh, weight lift and that sort of thing it definitely has a, an impact and you see that his muscles are, are growing and his skin is becoming more firm and, and that sort of thing and in general kind of like it, it looks like he can sort of like um take care of himself a little bit better than uh, one could fear that he would be able to do in the years to come so i would say if you have a, a myotonic dystrophy or if you have any sort of like a myotonic or a muscular dystrophy uh, condition then definitely i would go in and take uh, some of this uh, nmn and uh, i would do something else as well and that is uh, the other things that i've spoken about and that is uh, epigenin and uh, why would i take epigenin well i would do that because actually is it so that in the body there is i mean in the body there is always something that is building something up and then there is something else that is uh, breaking it down and that is in order to make sure that there is and sort of like a, a balance uh, in the body but uh, as we get a little bit older then something can be a little bit too much and that means that um, you might be breaking down NAD plus way too much than uh, you should or what is good for your body so something like a uh, epikinin that is actually something that is going in and it will uh, sort of like a uh, block some of these things that are breaking down NAD plus because when NAD plus is broken down then it's basically it's broken down to NMN again and uh, that you have to kind of like uh, make uh, NAD plus uh, again so uh, kind of like you would like to make sure that NAD plus is uh, being uh, not broken down unnecessarily so uh, that uh, is one thing uh, you can do so take this uh, epikinine and I will say later how much I'm actually taking on a daily basis then uh, there is uh, another thing that uh, actually does the same and that is uh, this uh, luteolin and uh, that is just uh, again it's just um, some pills and I will tell you later uh, how much I'm taking but uh, they sort of like uh, look like this they're kind of like relatively uh, big but um, that is also something that is going into uh, to block what is breaking down NAD+. And what is breaking down uh, NAD+, that is something called uh, CD38. Uh, so that is uh, an enzyme. And you want to like to kind of like uh, inhibit uh, the activity uh, of uh, that uh, enzyme. So that is uh, one thing you can do by taking epigenin. And you can take uh, this uh, luteolin. Then there is also something else. And when you are uh, generally in your body are producing NMN and from that you are producing NAD+, then uh, you need something called a niacinamide. And uh, niacinamide, that is uh, one of the first steps in order to make a NA NMN and uh, from there in a uh, NAD+, it is a bit difficult for these um, terms. But uh, what it also does is that basically there is something else in the body that is also breaking down NAD+, and that is uh, two other enzymes, and they are called uh, SIRTs and they are called uh, PAPs, or that is the uh, how they are kind of like describing them. And in order to uh, kind of like uh, inhibit those uh, enzymes, then you can actually take uh, niacinamide, so uh, the niacinamide version, so that is uh, that sort of version of uh, vitamin B3. So that way there is uh, two things that, I mean, there are other things you can do, but I have just chosen because I have used this uh, luteolin uh, before and then uh, epikinin was something new, but uh, the luteolin I already took. And then uh, niacinamide, I have taken that uh, before and that I would say maybe last time I did it was uh, maybe a year ago or something like that. And then I didn't take it for a long time because I didn't really see uh, an effect. And I think the reason was that uh, back then I did not take the uh, NMN as well. So I basically just took the uh, niacinamide Then I took some other supplements as well, but I didn't really take anything that uh, would uh, help me uh, make more NAD+. Where the whole point of uh, making NAD+, when I took these things here, that was, was to make uh, NAD+, uh, from this. Uh, so the uh, niacinamide but I didn't really feel there was any sort of uh, difference uh, back then and I think that if you are taking just one thing in order to boost something maybe it's a good idea to see if there is something else you can do as well because you might be able to boost something but uh, if uh, you maybe have too much of something that is breaking it down in the other end then maybe you need uh, more things to work together in tandem for example and uh, there I would say that like, uh, niacinamide would definitely work uh, well together with uh, NMN both because the uh, niacinamide is uh, what is uh, making NMN in the body but uh, apparently also it is something that is helping to uh, make sure that uh, what the end goal is to make NAD+, that NAD+, is not being uh, unnecessarily uh, broken down. So in that way, uh, niacinamide works uh, in two ways. And then uh, definitely epigenin as well. 
and then uh, the uh, Lutolin. And uh, before you're thinking that I'm making a lot of money out of uh, promoting all this sort of stuff here, well, I don't. I am not uh, paid to say uh, any of this. This is basically just uh, what I'm doing myself. And the whole goal is basically to, yes, I would like to stay as young as possible for as long as possible and all that sort of thing. But basically, is uh, the main goal is to make sure that my husband, he uh, is uh, being maintained uh, as good as possible because he has this sort of a uh, condition that is a uh, myotonic uh, dystrophy so uh, these things here it's uh, I don't have any links for it either so you can't really uh, get it through uh, a link uh, with Amazon or anything like that because I don't do those sort of uh, links anymore so uh, yes I would say that definitely something uh, like this that is um, something that I have seen uh, had a positive effect particularly uh, when uh, training and I can see uh, the building up of uh, muscle mass definitely something is uh, happening so that is uh, really really great and I'm actually thinking I will later make um, a, a training <laughs> video you know to show uh, some of the things that I do uh, myself but I don't really know when I will be uh, doing that but uh, if you're thinking that uh, you have actually heard that is something like epicanine that cannot really be taken up by the body well I have looked at some uh, various studies and I will link to particularly two studies where they actually had uh, a different and that was uh, with a uh, cancer that uh, was uh, prostate cancer and uh, the other one I think it was uh, they were inducing some uh, cancer stuff in um, the mouth of a uh, um, some mice basically and they were giving it uh, something that would uh, create these sort of uh, tumors and they were giving it uh, alongside uh, epikinine and there they saw that uh, those that were having epikinine alongside this um, treatment to make these uh, ulcers or these um, cancerous uh, growth in the first place so when the uh, epikinine was there then uh, nothing really happened but uh, if it wasn't there then uh, the tumors they started uh, to grow and the interesting thing uh, about that study in particular was that uh, oftentimes you see these studies where they are giving uh, really really high doses of something in order to make sure that they are seeing an effect but in this case here yeah, it was actually only um, 2.5 milligrams uh, per per body weight so like uh, per, per kilo and uh, yes we are talking about mice or th maybe I think it was mice or maybe it was rats but uh, the point is that uh, when I am about like um, 70 uh, kilograms then uh, for me it will be equivalent uh, equivalent uh, to uh, taking like uh, 175 uh, milligrams so how much am I actually taking a day well of the uh, epikini I started out taking um, three pills a day and in general, I would say that if you are taking something like the epikinine and stuff like that, there might be things that are best taken in the morning or best taken in the evening. But uh, as such, I like to take things um, like divided over the day. So I get a steady stream of it into my body over the day. Obviously, I don't get up in the middle of the night in order to take something. Really, um, well, I might, but not at the moment. So I am taking like at the beginning, I took uh, three of these ones. Yeah, and they kind of like, uh, look like this. And each, each of them there is a uh, 50 milligrams. So at the moment I am actually taking six a day. So that means that I am basically taking 300 milligrams. So that was actually a lot more than in the study with these uh, mice or rats or what it was. And uh, just with uh, 175 milligrams for someone like me, then uh, apparently they uh, saw an effect when they were equally uh, doing it with these uh, mice or, or rats. So when I'm taking kind of like uh, 300 milligrams uh, a day, I would say that I'm definitely taking more per kilo than uh, they were doing in the experiment. And in that experiment, apparently they had some very good result but I will link to, to those uh, articles so you can uh, read them uh, yourself now then uh, I would say uh, something like an uh, cinema there is uh, a lot of uh, research uh, on that and uh, definitely we, we know that that works and uh, then we have uh, the uh, NMN and definitely I would say one of the things uh, in one of the studies I'm, I will link to that as well and that is uh, the study where they found this uh, transporter for NMN and uh, there they said that actually when they were giving uh, NMN to uh, the uh, subjects then uh, they could see that uh, the cells were taking it up so rapidly that uh, it simply had to be that there was a transporter because if they had to take uh, an R, so uh, nicotinamide uh, ribose, in order to make NMN from that, it would simply take uh, too long. So when they could see that it was being taken up, the NMN, uh, into uh, the cell so rapidly, then they knew that it was not because NR was transformed into NMN uh, first, or NMN was basically broken down to NR and then converted back to NMN inside the cell. It would simply take it too long for what they saw, and therefore they knew that there must be uh, this uh, transporter that they have uh, now found. But obviously, uh, there will maybe be some people saying that um, there are uh, some. Uh, 
doctors uh, out there that are uh, producing this uh, niagen and uh, that is basically uh, nicotinamine uh, ribose and uh, they have maybe uh, a view that they would like that to be the only thing because they have a patent on it so uh, there might be some uh, money involved but uh, I will not go that much into that but definitely I can just say for myself that when I tried an eye gen I did not really see any sort of um, change it was not so like normally when I take a supplement I would kind of like uh, take it and then I say oh I saw some sort of change and then we're going in Google and find out other some scholarly articles and say uh, that actually is backing up what I'm seeing and oftentimes uh, there is but I would say that with the uh, night gen um, I, I didn't really see anything, but definitely with the NMM, I, I did see a, a difference, and definitely I can see that, uh, particularly for my husband, that he can actually he can work out uh, a lot better, and I can definitely see that his uh, muscles are growing. But uh, as I said in the, the uh, community tab, then uh, definitely one of the things that have happened uh, lately, where I will say I really have seen a difference, that is definitely taking the uh, niacinamide the epigeny and then uh, NMN and then uh, the uh, luteolin and then uh, leucine and then uh, glycine as well those things I would say that is definitely something that is good in in order to uh, to maintain the body in a good state and in order to uh, build it up uh, as well and you can see some of the uh, other videos I have made about uh, leucine and, and glycine so uh, some of these uh, collagen um, videos and uh, a little uh, side thing is uh, actually that um, something like uh, luteolin that is uh, really good in another sense and that is because uh, when you have a uh, hyaluronic acid in your body then there is also something called hyaluronidase and that is something that is basically breaking down a hyaluronic acid but uh, lo and behold then if you have something like a uh, luteolin that will actually uh, inhibit the effect of uh, hyaluronidase so uh, that you are not having uh, your hyaluronic acid unnecessarily uh, broken down so uh, that is why i'm also uh, a bit keen on taking um, luteolin as a supplement uh, as well so uh, yes I will uh, make some uh, following up uh, videos uh, in uh, order for you to see how uh, the uh, the training is going and if I can uh, build up muscle mass in a better way and particularly if I can uh, make sure that uh, we are building up uh, a lot more muscle mass uh, for uh, my husband. So uh, yes, uh, I will make uh, some uh, sort of um, videos later on that if I can see that uh, something is actually uh, happening. But so far I'm definitely I'm really happy with uh, having found this uh, in a man. And uh, before, uh, as I said before, someone say that I'm paid to say all sort of that I am not and the reason I am using a uh, California gold uh, nutrition that's called uh, nutrition yes that is basically because that is uh, what I have found to be uh, the cheapest so how much am I actually then uh, taking because uh, obviously you would like uh, to know that so it comes with this uh, small uh, spoon here and uh, it is something uh, they say uh, 300 uh, milligrams down here and that means that in this one here there is about 300 uh, milligrams so what I am doing because I saw uh, some uh, I think he's a professor some uh, Dr. Sinclair or something like that he's talked uh, very much uh, about uh, this stuff here and uh, I have nothing to do with him but uh, he said um, somewhere that he took uh, about one gram a day so uh, what I have uh, tried to do is that I've taken uh, three of them in the morning I took three of them in the evening but then I found that maybe that was a little bit too much so kind of like I tried to take one uh, gram in the morning and one gram in the evening but uh, I think that is a little bit uh, too much and if you are looking online you might uh, find some people saying that they had to rush to the loo because uh, it can maybe have that sort of effect some people will say that and I will say that I am a little bit like I tend to agree with that. So uh, what I have done lately is that um, I have taken uh, two of these in the morning and then I've taken two of them in the late afternoon and then I've taken two of them uh, in the evening. So uh, in that sense, um, kind of like I uh, get the same amount but just uh, divided uh, over the day and doing that I have not seen any sort of uh, issues with that. Then uh, the uh, niacinamide, so the uh, B3. Then I am taking two of uh, these ones the other day and each pill there's three so we have two of these one here and uh, each pill that is uh, 1500 milligrams so uh, basically what I'm taking uh, during a day that is a uh, three grams and uh, as far as I understand you should not really take more than that and I don't really think that it's necessary to take uh, more uh, than that but uh, that kind of like could be sort of like the limit that you should maybe not take uh, more uh, than three grams a day so that is what I'm doing and then uh, we have uh, the uh, luteolin 
and again these are these uh, capsules here and uh, sometimes I take uh, three a day and sometimes I take six a day it's kind of like a little bit like a it, it it's not super expensive not at all but I mean if you add the whole thing up it, it all these things it, it does cost so sometimes I usually just take three a day and sometimes I might take a uh, six a day so that would be two in the morning two in the late afternoon and two in the evening and uh, these ones here that is a, a English company and they're called the uh, five greens and again I have nothing to do with them but that is why I have found that it is a uh, the most cheap place uh, to to find it and in uh, these ones here it says uh, at the back here it says there is a uh, 450 milligrams it says uh, up here if you maybe you can't see it but that's how much there is uh, in so uh, I would say that uh, luteolin in general that is basically just if you have a um, these uh, peanuts, then uh, the shells of that, it, it actually comes from that. So the uh, the yellowish color from that, that is what it is. So it is something that is basically really, really cheap. So, uh, but still, obviously, supplements they will always cost far more than they should. So uh, yes, uh, this one here, that is uh, why I have found it to be uh, the cheapest. And then uh, we have uh, the uh, Epigeny, and I'm using a uh, Swanson, and I buy it at, at iHerb, and uh, again that is uh, because that is uh, the cheapest and I have nothing to do with it. Um, but uh, buying it here in the UK, like going to Holland and Bear and stuff like that, I mean, I can definitely not afford that. I, I would not be able to buy all these sort of things if I had to buy it down in Holland and Bear. I did that many years ago until I found out how to buy it uh, on iHerb, and lo and behold, I'm really happy that I've done that. So uh, this uh, here, and actually it says down here, prostate health. So maybe they have seen some of these uh, scholarly articles about how it uh, has actually helped with it, that sort of a thing. So uh, yes, I'm taking this uh, from a Swanson, and that is uh, 50 milligrams in each of the pills. And I'm taking uh, three a day. So one uh, in the morning, one in the evening, and one in the... Um, so three a day, but sometimes I actually late. That's what I used to take when I started out. But lately, I have actually done so that I'm taking two in the morning, two in the afternoon, late afternoon, and then um, two in the, the evening. But again, it's a little bit like it's difficult to find out how much should you take. But uh, this uh, scholarly articles with the uh, the rats or mice, they, it would be kind of like 175 milligrams a day. So uh, if I'm taking 300 at the moment, where I normally just took one. 150 milligrams then uh, maybe I would go down to take 150 again instead of 300 depends on if I see a difference or not but uh, of course I mean all these things here it, it does actually cost uh, a lot of money even that uh, one product might not cost that much then others are costing rather basically a fortune and definitely I would say something like Nigen it costs absolutely uh, a fortune compared to uh, something like this definitely so uh, for that reason also I would uh, take this one here and I think I simply think it is a lot better choice to take in a min uh, over uh, in R. So uh, yes, uh, that was my uh, verdict on these uh, things here. Definitely uh, um, continuing with uh, taking it. So yes, if you'd like to see more of this sort of videos, please subscribe, hit the bell and do all those things. But do not to be notified when I upload more of this sort of videos. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye.